I am Dr. Marcus Schmidt from the Ohio Sleep Medicine Institute. This video cast is particularly for physicians and other health care providers who deal with patients who have nasal CPAP as a therapy. Many of you have heard the term CPAP failure and a lot of patients that you have at some point have probably at least you've come across patients who you've considered to be CPAP failures. I really don't like the term CPAP failure because most of patients who are considered to be CPAP failures actually are not. And what is most important in getting patients to utilize their CPAP and to feel comfortable with it is number one, they need to be on the right pressure. One of the most common mistakes we see here at the Ohio Sleep Medicine Institute is patients that are coming in on pressures that are far too high for them to tolerate. Every patient has what we call a therapeutic window. That is, there's a certain pressure that they do very well with their CPAP. If the pressure is too low, these patients tend to have difficulty with breakthrough breathing stoppages. There's not enough air pressure to stent open or open up that airway during sleep. Yet, if the pressure is too high, then the patients tend to uh, have difficulty tolerating that pressure, fighting the machine. And so everybody has a window. And some patients' windows are very, very small. They have a very narrow therapeutic window for pressure. Others, on the other hand, can tolerate big changes in pressure and do very well. Knowing whether or not a patient may have a narrow therapeutic window is very important to find out to see if they can then tolerate CPAP. The other problem is education. Many patients are just not educated as to why they should use CPAP. It's very common for us to see patients come into our clinic who are sent the CPAP uh, in the mail with no explanation as to how to use the device. Uh, they also need to be explained as to what are the long-term consequences of not using CPAP. Sleep apnea is the number one known cause of high blood pressure in the country. It triples the risk for heart attack and it is a cause for uh, stroke and diabetes as well. That type of education empowers the patient so they understand why they need to use it. Getting the right mask and getting the right mask fit is also very important. If you look at the national statistics on CPAP compliance, it's unfortunately quite low at about 50%. Our CPAP compliance here at the Ohio Sleep Medicine Institute is between 85 and 90%. That is 85 to 90% of all patients that we put on CPAP stay on CPAP. And it is very important for patients to, once they're on CPAP, follow with the sleep medicine physician to make sure that they are getting using the device and if they are having difficulty with their CPAP, it is important for us to find out why and address those issues specifically. It is only through this comprehensive approach that we believe that we can really maximize patient compliance to ensure that they are utilizing this very important form of therapy.